Hello again, everyone. All right, today I'm going to do something. <laughs> Is that why you're watching? So you can see me do something. All right, I am using, if you all can see this, uh, this is the Legion Yupo. The This one is 11 by 14 that I'm using today. This is the medium weight um, because I use my um, hair dryer on the cool setting. I don't need to get the more expensive heavyweight paper most of the time unless I just want it for some reason. So my hair dryer that most of you are familiar with by now. Uh, it's a 500 watt Revlon styling brush, hair dryer, had a little round brush on the end. I just took the brush attachment off and just use this as my air source. I do use it on the cool setting almost all the time. Uh, now the cool setting does blow a high airflow, so it does take some practice to get used to using this. Ah, uh, right, what else do I have? Um, this is just my little plastic stick that I sometimes use for getting the ink moving. If you get a little spot that sort of dams up, the ink won't move real good, and you might want to just dab it a little to get it moving. Also have Ranger inks, uh, eggplant, and pink sherbet. I'm not sure I've ever used those two just together exclusively before, so give it a shot today and see how it goes and this is pinata brass the jacquard brand uh, this is undiluted i just put it in this bottle because i get it in like four ounce bottles and it, you, there's no applicator tip on them so um, these are really handy little bottles to have uh, this is somewhere it's a combination of 91 and 99 percent alcohol which I am still using up from our move where I combined some bottles together. Sorry, flipping my paper over. I had a, I think where I'd set my hair dryer down on it. Had a little mark on it there. Although I noticed when I got this out, it had a little bent corner. I think I did that during the move too. So, let's get started. I feel like there was something else I needed to tell y'all before I got started, but I don't know what it was, so we'll just move along and see what we can do. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out, I mean, I've got just sort of a something, you know, loose in mind, but I was trying to figure out which way I wanted to turn it. I'm hoping y'all can see this okay, because I am turning it uh, angled here. <clears throat> I'm going to start out with some eggplant maybe I can get the bottle open um, and I've mentioned this before if you guys have that trouble if your bottle gets stuck if your lid gets stuck because there's some ink in it be sure you grab something and wipe off any little dried bits of ink that are on there because it will you can see it will um, drop down on your paper just little dried bits of ink and then when you start painting it's going to reconstitute and you may end up, if it gets alcohol on it, you may end up with it in a place that you don't want it. So just be kind of cautious of that. All right. Um, oh, oh, I'm also using my Fordham foot pedal um, that controls the, the speed of this so that if you don't want the super high airflow, so I know y'all can't see it, but I'm pushing my foot down on my foot pedal. Um, if you don't want that high airflow, you can use a foot pedal and it will drop it down. You can control, I mean, you can control it from off all the way to high in whatever kind of increments you want to use. But that foot pedal, <clears throat> it's a little bit expensive. I think it was $40.00. But if you are having trouble with the high airflow, it might be a worthwhile investment for you. I'm sorry, y'all. <clears throat> a little bit hoarse today. Uh, but you, anyway, you might want to look into getting that. If you go with a, a cheaper one or a different brand, just make sure that you get a variable speed control one. Because otherwise, it may do nothing but turn your 
um, dryer on and off. It's got to have that variable speed option on it in order to do a good job really controlling your airflow. So if you're new to alcohol inks, um, the UFO that I'm using will stain. I'm right, putting that on heat for a minute. I'm getting a lot of, of water beating. Um, be real cautious if you flip it on heat because you will warp your surface. Uh, anyway, the UFO will stain. So keep that in mind. Particularly with certain colors, eggplant is one of those colors that definitely stains. It's sort of a purplish color but it will separate out. It's like the paper sucks the blue out of it and it stains the paper blue and you get um, pink coming out. You'll see as I start spreading things out a little bit more. Sorry, I had something in mind, but now I'm changing my mind. Can't decide what I wanna do. Well, let's do this. Oops, sorry, <laughs> losing my bottle there. Um, I know y'all hate it when I do this, when I stop and think, change my mind in the middle of whatever it is I was working on. Alright. Um, pink sherbet is another color that stains a little bit, but not as much as the um, eggplant. <clears throat> a lot of the ranger colors will sort of break up and stain, but that's part of what makes a lot of them a lot of fun to use with you, Bo, because you can get some just really, really different and pretty results with it that you're not going to get with something like graphics or Nora or something that doesn't stain. But I really enjoy having the option for a non-staining paper, which is what I use most of the time. I just occasionally decide to go ahead and use Yupo because I wanted that staining today. It kind of gives you a little bit of depth that you don't get if you're using a non-staining paper, synthetic art paper. I don't know if you all can see it or not, but I had flipped it over to heat there for a second uh, because I was getting a lot of water beating. It's right at the moment the sun is out, but the humidity is has got to be somewhere in the 90s, 90 percentage. Per, yep, mm -hmm, however you say that. Um, it's got to be up there, it's very humid. It's supposed to rain here shortly which won't help the humidity any. Um, oh, but anyway, I'd flipped it over to heat because of the water beating. But I don't know if y'all could see or not, it did start, I could see my paper start moving, uh, like warping a little bit. So I flipped it back to cool, and now my paper has cooled down and has flattened back out. So if you're c real careful, um, you can, you know, use your heat in short bursts without damaging your or warping your surface just uh you know cut it back over to cool quit putting the heat on it and uh cool your let your paper cool down
Now I'm moving it around like that because I did have it on heat again. You can see it kind of warped a little bit, but that should flatten back out. Um, I was getting a lot of the water spots. You can let them dry if you want. And it, I mean, it gives you some kind of cool effects in there. Little bubbly looking edges. I don't know. Very, very small amount similar to the lacing that you can get with acrylic paint, but not really. I, I don't really know how to describe it, but um, I mean, it's, it's pretty and it adds, you know, just another layer of something to your painting if you want to leave it on there. <clears throat> now with this, I hate doing this when I'm using UFO because of the staining, there's gonna be a little blue mark out here now once that ink gets moved off of there some. I gotta level my table. Y'all can see it, everything flows away from me a little bit. I don't have my table level good in here. You all can see it. It left, you know, just the faintest little bluish stain underneath my pink sherbet there. I did manage to hide the little bit. You can just barely see the little line right there where it came out. And that won't, that's not even going to be anything that's going to be noticeable or a problem at all. I love the way these two colors blend together. I think they're just very cool. But I'm a huge pink, purple, blue, and green fan. Those are my favorite colors. All of them together are my absolute favorite colors. I'm not a, like, just one color kind of person. I like color blends and combinations. You'll notice I'm using a little more ink today than I normally do. Um, normally I only put down about one or two drops. Um, partially because I am using bigger paper but I also wanted the color to be just a little more intense. Not that this is an intense color, but um, I did want to have just a little bit more of uh, you know, a little bit darker color going on. build up in it. When you get a lot of moisture build up, you got to be real careful if you're dabbing at it because it definitely, your um, paper towel or whatever you're using uh, can leave marks in your ink. So pretty much all I'm doing right now is spreading it around um, you'll notice when I'm blending here, you want to try to keep your airflow going pretty much in the same direction as you're trying to blend so that it sort of softens it into your other color, I, if that makes any sense. I just, I mean, try to watch what I'm doing and maybe you'll kind of understand what I'm saying right there. Because this one right here is going to be blended into the, the eggplant color, so you can tell what I mean. I like to try to blend my dark color into my light color. Now that's 
can I just lean? You might find it easier to do it the other way. I just feel like I get better blends when it's when I'm blowing the dark into the light color. My, my hand keeps like going back and forth. This color, that color, this color, that color. So while I'm working on this a little bit, let me just say, Again, I know I've said it before, but I just wanted to say thank you again, all you amazing viewers out there. Y'all rock. Um, I think I have the best YouTube viewers of anybody, because y'all are just great. You've been so patient with me, with all my crazy schedule, and I never know when I'm going to be able to post, and... And there's times I'll have videos made that I just need to do voiceovers on and can't manage to find time to do a voiceover. And you all end up waiting forever for me to post. And you're so patient and so understanding. And it means so much to me that uh, you all haven't just gotten sick of me and my non-existent posting schedule and given up on me and gone somewhere else. I still cannot get used to not needing to turn off my hair dryer because my foot pedal does it for me since I lift my foot up off of it. It cuts off automatically. But I'm still, it's such muscle memory for me now that uh, I have a hard time not doing that. See, there's a tiny little spot of white right there that the ink didn't go into, and that's when you can use something like that little tool. You don't need a special tool for it. Um, the only reason I have one is because I just happened to see those one day when I was at Hobby Lobby and thought, oh, that would be pretty handy, so I just picked one up. Before that, I had some old makeup brushes, <clears throat> like eyeshadow brushes. Uh, trying to see if I have one handy here real quick. I can show you. There we go. Oh, like this. And I just used the back end of it. Uh, a paintbrush, you know, the rounded back end of a paintbrush would work. Just don't use something sharp for this because you can make marks in your ink. And yes, I know because I actually did that. So <laughs> be real careful. I, I grabbed up my little stick one day and used the pointy end um, without realizing it. And I made marks in it that I had to try to go back and fill in and fix because it did not look good at all.
Ew. <laughs> I don't know if y'all could see that or not. I just splattered ink all over my paper, my underneath paper and myself. It was right there on the edge of the paper and it just splattered up all over. You can see I'm getting a tiny bit of warping there again. I had it on heat again. Um, both of these colors, if you live in a really humid area, both of these colors are ones that are much worse to get moisture beads in them. It's uh, in pretty much any color, and now this is not exclusively, but any of the colors that contain red, you know, pinks, purples, reds, oranges, those seem to be the worst for um, getting the moisture beads. And I'm not sure exactly what it is. Like it's got something to do with the composition of the red ink. That's the only thing I can figure is it's just got more moisture in it. Uh, just as a um, consequence of its production than some of the other colors do. Now, part of my issue as well with the moisture right now is not using the 99% alcohol. You, if you can get 99, 100% isopropyl, definitely get it because it really does, it really does seem to make a difference uh, for me anyway. Sorry, thinking again. Thinking again. All right, so I'm not sure how this is gonna look. Because this is Yupo, and because it's gonna stain, what I wanna do is come back in and so try to soften these edges, but because it's Yupo, that's gonna be a little more difficult to do just because it's gonna leave stains wherever the ink was to start with. The more you thin out your ink, the less that it's gonna stain underneath it, but um, I, I probably should have been doing that as I went along, but I didn't, so. Now, I am putting some extra brass in here this time. Don't ask me why I'm shaking my alcohol bottle. There's no reason for that. I'm just talking and not paying attention to what I'm doing. Um, you know, it's like the, the more color that comes out of your ink because you're thinning it down and spreading it out, the less likely you are to get staining on the further outer edges. But that's not... I mean, you can still get staining even, uh, even then, but it, definitely time for a new paper towel. Um, it's less likely to happen. Not saying it won't, just saying it's less likely. And be real careful. See, I, I actually damaged just a teeny bit right there. I, well, I didn't damage it, but I got too much of my ink off right there. <clears throat> when I was trying to get the little moisture beads off. Yeah. 
So I don't really know why I decided to add more brass to that, but it's just one of those things that sometimes something just pops in my head and I decide to go ahead and do it. I watched Bohemian Rhapsody last night and I've got songs from that movie stuck in my head now. <clears throat> and start singing in a minute. Except then I'd probably get copyright strikes. See now what I'm what I'm looking at here is whether or not I like the transition of that light to the dark. Because that's one of the things about blending on Yupo that you're very likely to see happen. Uh, I just was trying to decide if I wanted to leave it like it was or try to do something about it. It is harder to do something about mistakes on Yupo than it is on other synthetic art papers. But, and like I said though, I mean you can get effects with Yupo that you're not going to get with the other papers. So I switch papers just, you know, depending on what I want to do. Okay, sorry, I had to stop there for a second and go hunt up a, another paper towel without making you all just sit there and stare at nothing. All right, anyhow, what I was going to try to do, I'm actually going to use just this little piece first, is where this kind of ran down out here, I'm going to try and take some of that off and see if it's stained underneath it. If it is, I may just have to go back over it with something. Now see, that was pulled out far enough that it wasn't stained underneath it. I just didn't like the little squiggle that came down there. So I de-squiggled it. And you can see up here I've got a drop of alcohol on it right there that left a little circle probably need to go back and do something with. I'm almost kind of wishing I had gotten a like a very pale peach color to use in here too. I think that would look beautiful in with this or some salmon or something but if I go back and try and add it now I can only add it to the edges. So I add it in here I'm not sure what color it's going to create and I don't uh, you know, I don't, it's not going to be the peachy color that I would want it to be, anyway. Because it would blend too much with the eggplant. Sorry, I'm trying to get that little, just sort of hard line of brass off in there, because I didn't love that. And this isn't, this is something I normally wouldn't do until I was finished with a painting and I might go, you know, I go back and look and see little things like that on the edges that I can take off without damaging the major portion of the painting. Um, I'll do that at the end, but yeah, for some reason, I just had to do that right now. All right. Now, got to get back in the swing of things here. When you put down your brass, try it. You'll see I'm kind of coming from the side. You want to try to get up under it. Um, it will help a lot with getting your brass to float. 
and move around a little bit better. Flipping to the wrong setting, I was trying to get it back on cool. My paper was warping up a little there. And when you do this, I think I said this already, if you're dabbing some little moisture beads out, be super gentle. You just barely want to touch your paper, your paper towel or whatever you're using, you just barely want to touch it to the moisture part, the water part, not uh, mess with any of the rest of it any more than you can help. Because you don't want to leave scratch marks in it or anything. Here's another example of when I'm going to use this because I just had that one little finger came out there and say I almost let it dry too much because it did sort of scratch the even the rounded end sort of left some little marks in there. So I was going to try and I might be able to fix those when I come from this side. It's one of the things you can do if you don't want to go back over this part again, is if you're coming in from the other side, you may be able to push it down far enough that, because all it's going to take is one little sort of swipe over that with your alcohol to fix it. I'm sorry, I know this is probably turning into a very long video. I haven't looked at my timer to see how long it's been running. Alright, so I'm trying to get it. There we go. Yeah, I just got that. It just went right over top of the scratched part and it smoothed it back out again. Thinking, I might shouldn't have put more brass on this. I don't know. Sometimes I have a tendency to go overboard with it because I like shiny, sparkly, glittery things, but this this one might have actually looked better without quite as much brass added to it, but that's okay, because I'm loving the way these colors look together anyway, and I just love brass anyhow on this. Right, now I'm going to have to add a little more out here. You can see I blew it in a little too far. I've got too much of the ink blown towards the middle. And it had already started drying out there on that outer edge. So that was why I added a little more alcohol right there to it keep it from having a hard edge like this 
I still see them of the brass right here, but that's one of those things that I'll go back after, you know, and just, if all that's out there is just a little ring of brass, you can just gently rub it with your finger and get most of that off. If you don't, but just, it's got to be dry good first. If the brass is not good and dry, it won't work. You'll just smudge it on there. Which is one reason I usually wait until I'm done to go back over and try and, and fix little things like that that are bugging me. Not that they would bug everybody and some people would prefer that look. My husband actually does. He actually loves the look of the, um, the little edges of brass out there. It's just my personal taste. Which, yeah, brings me to something that I may have said before, but I wanted to be sure to repeat it. And that everything that I show you all, this is just the way that I do it. This doesn't mean this is the way that you have to do it. You know, find your own style that works for you. That was when I was learning to do this, that was what I did was, you know, I watched some other people that were doing it, and then basically did it my own way. I just experimented and figured out what was gonna work the best for me to get the results that I wanted. You see, I've actually even warped my big sheet of Yupo I've got underneath here right now. And that is how you know you're using too much heat. Now, you can do a really, really pretty sort of stormy looking painting, something like this. And if you leave those, the little water beads, it looks really neat on it. It just uh, kind of adds to it, I guess. I don't know. Just to me, it makes it look more stormy. See, I'm, I'm looking here now because I'm trying to decide. Because I don't want to leave this, but I also don't want to wash out too much of my um, pink sherbet color by pulling too much eggplant up that way. So I was trying to decide where to put the, the brass and alcohol down. <laughs> there I go, shaking my alcohol again. I'm keeping this in frame good enough for you all um, with such a big sheet and I zoomed out my my phone a little bit to make sure that it all got in there good but with as much as I turn and move things and all that I'm hoping I'm not accidentally pulling it out of the shot from y'all
what I need to do one day is do use the exact same colors do try to do the same painting on Yupo and then on like the Nara or the graphics or something that doesn't stain just so y'all can see the difference um, because I mean there is there is a difference might try to do that sometime soon if I can remember I'm always having ideas for things to do for videos. <coughs> but my problem, or one of my problems, other than finding time to do them, is when I do find time to do a video, I can't remember what my ideas were. I was keeping a little notepad uh, when I was in Washington that I could jot down ideas that I had on and then uh, Maddie, one of my granddaughters, she took my notepad and used it to draw on, so I don't have a notepad right now. I keep forgetting to pick one up. Now see, what I'm thinking about doing is whether or not to put a little more brass right in here. If you look at it from one angle, it looks fine the way it is. If you look at it from another, I don't like the way it's done right there. But I also don't want this to be washed out really light. i try just putting a little more or eggplant on it right here at the same time. We'll see. We'll see. I may regret this decision. I don't want to lose all of my pink there. plastering down my painting here. I've got bunches and bunches of those puppy pads, which are great for painting on. But they also um, fuzz up a lot, so I have to be kind of careful about that. I think I'm going to come back and do the same thing up here because I like the way that that darkened it up in there. So I think I'm going to darken this up as well. And hope I don't regret it. Because you just never know. There's been times I really wish I had not done certain things to paintings. thing that I don't know if you all have noticed or not from the video, but that I have noticed when I'm painting is if I stop, when I'm, when I'm having a lot of trouble with moisture, if I stop, you know, to do something like this, even for just a few seconds, I have more problem with the moisture. Don't know why, but I guess the alcohol is continuing to evaporate at a really rapid rate, but the, um, the water that's left behind is not, whoa, is not, uh, evaporating any more quickly. Anyway, so it leaves a, um, uh, it seems like I get more trouble like that. It leaves more moisture on the paper. So you can see I got a lot of moisture on that one. 
and it's largely just because of me dropping my ink bottle, splattering ink everywhere, trying to pick that up. You know, it was, it took me too long, I think, to get to the, to get to blowing the air on it. It's not even wanting to all come up. I'm fixing this because now that I've darkened up around, I don't like that one little very light spot that's in there. So I just want to try to darken that up just a touch, I hope. I didn't get enough alcohol on it. Sorry, I know I'm getting this out of your all's view for a minute, but I need to see it from a different angle. And this is part of the danger of, you know, fixing things. <laughs> because the more you fix, the more you have to fix. So, so be absolutely certain that you are really not happy with whatever you've got going on um, so that you don't end up causing yourself a whole lot of unnecessary headaches with going back and trying to fix things and running the risk of really messing something up that you like. Okay, now, so I see other things that I could continue to fiddle with, but I'm not going to. I am, uh, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I love these two colors together, too. I may have to do one. I've done ones that, you know, are similar before, but I used Periwinkle, which is a much lighter purple color than the eggplant. I'd like to try and do a darker one like this with some some peachy salmony sort of color in it, uh, which I may do eventually. All right, so the only other thing that I will be doing to this is coming back through and just getting a few of those little the lines off from the brass. Some of them I'll leave, some of them I won't. You know, some of them look fine. Actually, a lot of them probably look fine to all of you all. <laughs> Can't figure out why I'm doing this. But that's just me. So I just want to soften that up. I forgot to fix that, but... It's like, yeah, do I really want to now? Yeah, I do. Okay, sorry, you're stuck here for another... Five or ten minutes. <laughs> I know, you're groaning. No. The people who didn't want to watch this long of a video are already gone anyway, so. So those of you who want to see it are still here, and I appreciate it. Oh, lost my pedal.
I really, really, really do appreciate those of you who actually watch the whole video. I really do. I know sometimes the ads can get annoying and, you know, and I get annoying, but I really do appreciate it because I know that you are the ones who really want to learn. Because if you don't watch the video, you know, you miss all kinds of tips that I give for the random things that just pop into my head at unknown times that I decide to share with you all. So, and I get far too many questions from people who did not watch a video when the answer is clearly stated in the video. That, that does kind of bug me. <clears throat> but, those of you all who have hung with me and, you know, actually watch the videos and listen to what I'm saying, I really appreciate it. You all are the ones that I know you really want to learn. Really want to know how to do this. So, let's see. Get it in there for you. So, there we go. That is my, I don't know what, stormy day, stormy evening. I don't know what to call this one, but anyway... I'm, I'm really happy with this. I think it's very pretty. Yeah. I'm excited which way I like it better. I mean, this is one of those that seriously could go any direction. This is the way I was originally planning on going, um, but was going to bring this part out more over here. Um, was part of my original plan. But I kind of like it like this. So, I think that's the way I'm going to leave it. Alright, well... Once again, I really appreciate you all for taking the time to watch the video. And, uh, you know, I hope you'll continue to join me. If you've got things that you would like to see, let me know. If there's some particular thing. Um, I have not been able to watch other people's YouTube videos in months now. I just do not have time. But, uh... You know, if there's some technique that you all think I should try out that I haven't seen yet. Well, not like you would know. Sorry, that was a dumb statement. But anyway, you know, let me know if there's something that, uh, that you all would particularly like to see me do. And I will do my best to get you a video made of that. All right. Well, I love every one of you. Thank you so much for watching. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. Join our growing family here. And as always, y'all feel free to share these. It doesn't bother me a bit. You know, share them to people you know who might be looking for a teacher to know how to do this. All right, well, I'll be back with y'all soon. Have a great day. Bye, everyone.